This video is all about buttons. Buttons are graphical components that users can click, typically to trigger some action, while labels are graphical components that display text that cannot be interacted with. Let's first look at the cargo.toml file. Recently, Rust 1.74.0 was released. Please use RustUp to update Rust to the latest version. Last time we saw two simple examples of a GUI with labels. Today, we are going to focus on buttons. The source code is in the src directory. Let's open the file. We know what context is and what central panel is. These are the components we are going to learn today. As we have seen in the first video, we need to define a struct. Last time, we defined a struct without any fields. In the current example, we have defined a field named counter. i32 is the type. We had exactly the same codes as in the first example. We know from the previous example that this part of code is responsible for the appearance and behavior of our graphical interface. To be specific, it is the update method which is responsible for the behavior of the graphical interface. We only use the central panel. This is the general format of using the central panel. Last time, we created labels using the codes on the right. Now we are creating buttons. Unlike labels, buttons are interactive. Let's dive in a little deeper into the UI usage. This is the official site. UI is a struct. The codes here show how UI is used for placing widgets. Let's see how the button is used. Click the link. This brings us to a page showing how the button method is used. The method button returns a response. Click response for more information. Response is a struct. On the left, we can see the clicked method. Click it. Now we have a detailed description of the method. The value it returns is a boolean. For the current frame, if the button is clicked, the returned value is true, otherwise, it is false. Another way of creating a button. Create a small button. Another way. We can use the same way to create a label. Create a button that is disabled and grayed out. Let's modify the main function. This line of code creates the application. This is the code we used before, where the default setting was used. Now we are going to change some settings. But, first, we will have a look at the official description of the native options. It is a struct. We are going to set the initial window position and the initial window size. We define a variable called options. This is the initial window position. Vec2 is a two-dimensional vector, wrapped inside sum. We will learn the meaning of sum. This is the initial window position. From the x and y values, we can see the window will be on the top left corner of the screen. How do we handle other fields? Like this. Let's run the program. The window is in the right place, in the right size, with the right widgets in the central panel. We imported UI, but did not use it. We defined a field named counter, but did not use it. These are where we import UI and define the field counter. Sometimes we need to put some code into a function to make some parts of our program simpler. For example, if we want to put these lines into a function, how do we do it? We define a function called button demo. We need to pass UI to the function. And we need to pass the argument frame to the function. We call the function like this. The codes did not get compiled. Let's get back to the codes. We add an ampersand sign. Run the program again. It works. There is a warning. We defined the variable counter, but we did not use it. Next, we are going to modify the program to change the window behavior. This is the final code. Horizontal means we lay out our widgets horizontally. Please run the code. Next, comment out the horizontal layout to see what will happen. Thanks for watching. 